So after history, I will start talking about examination. Dr. Mo, do we need to examine in PLAB 2? In every single station, do we need to examine? No. Only maximum, maximum of two or three stations in the whole exam when you will examine. And I'm not, I'm going to talk about this later on. That's not my topic now. But do I need to examine? No. Only specific stations where the question outside tells you do relevant examination, assess the patient, then you will examine. Otherwise, no examination. So now I will consider this as no examination. So I will come to examination and I will verbalize examination. Verbalize examination. Verbalize. 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 Verbalize examination. So I will say, so I will say ideally, 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 I should be examining. And then always, always start your examinations or when you verbalize examination, you need to verbalize observation, observation, observation. Like what? Like oxygen saturation, like pulse rate, like temperature, okay? Like respiratory rate and system and system. What is the system? For example, if the patient is coming with something in his abdomen, so abdominal examination. If it's heart, I will examine your heart. If it's lungs, I will be examining the chest. So that's the system. So examination. Should I examine or should I verbalize? You will verbalize because you will only examine in specific stations that you will know as you go along with the course. Okay? But you have to verbalize examination. Why? Because the examiner will give you findings. So how will I verbalize it? So I will say, Andrew, is it okay if I examine you? I will be checking your observations, which is, for example, oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, heart rate, and uh, temperature, as well as I will be listening to the chest, I'll be examining to the heart, and that's it. So, system, whichever system you want, but before that observation. In every station, in every history taking station, you need to verbalize, verbalize that you will examine. And always, as I, as I said, I said, is it okay if always give the consent? Anyway, after examination, after you verbalize the examination, for example, the examiner gave you findings. He said everything is normal. Or he said the oxygen is low. So after he, gave, he gives you the uh, um, examination, you must tell the patient. You must tell the patient the finding. What do you mean tell the patient the finding? For example, the patient, the examiner said everything is normal. So, Mr. Andrew, after examining you, fortunately, I found that everything is normal. For example, the examiner said to you, uh, pulse is high or uh, respiratory rate is high. Mr. Andrew, after examining you, I found that your breathing is quite high. So, always after verbalizing the examination, if you get given finding, if Tell him, tell the patient. If you don't give any findings, if the, pay, if the examiner did not talk, don't look at him, move on. Then after examination, after examination, and after telling the patient, I have something called idea. Idea, idea. So ideas will come right before provisional diagnosis. So right before I give the provisional diagnosis, I will ask idea. What is idea? Idea is basically asking the patient what runs through his mind or asking the patient if he has any idea about what's happening or if he has any idea about his diagnosis. Dr. Mo, do you think that the patient will know about his diagnosis? Well, you might have a patient who's having something and he's actually suspecting something else or he's, suspect, he's actually suspecting his condition. What do you mean, Dr. Mo? For example, a patient, his dad passed of heart attack. His brother died of heart attack. And he knows about heart attack and today he's coming with chest pain. So by asking him, do you have any idea what's happening here? He will tell you, yes, doctor, I'm suspecting or I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of heart attack. Is it heart attack, doctor? Then he saved your time in the provisional diagnosis. So then you can say, well, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm suspecting heart attack. So he saved your time. So always idea comes where? When do I ask an idea? When do I ask the patient? Do you have an idea what's happening? Do you have any idea, any idea about what's happening? When do I ask the patient about idea? Do you have an idea about what's happening? Do you have any idea about what's happening? When? Right before the provisional diagnosis. Right 
B4 provisional diagnosis. Okay. Dr. Mo, can I ask her idea early in history? No. Why? Imagine if you are asking the patient, Doctor, do you, if you are asking the patient, sorry, do you have any idea what's happening? And the patient said, no, doctor. What is happening, doctor? Well, me neither. I don't even know yet. It will sound odd. It will sound, you will sound as a stupid doctor. So, please, always idea will come before provisional diagnosis. When you have something to say, always ask idea. So, I will ask my patient, do you have any doubts about what's happening? Then the patient said yes, the patient said no. Then I will go to provisional diagnosis, which here I will be giving my patient provisional diagnosis. So, one question that run, uh, run through people's mind. Dr. Mo, do I need to have a specific diagnosis? No. Dr. Mo, can I give provisional diagnosis in the form of two differentials? Definitely yes. Definitely it is the best way. Definitely it is the safest way. So the safest way and the best way is giving the provisional diagnosis in the form of two differentials. For example, a patient is coming with lower tummy pain, chronic abdominal pain, chronic abdominal pain, for example. I'm suspecting it could be PID or it could be IBS, irritable bowel syndrome or PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. I could give it in a form of differential. Well, it could be this or it could be that. So basically, provisional diagnosis can, can be in the form of two differentials. Two differentials, yes. Definitely, yes, can be in the form of two differentials. It's fine. If you are suspecting one thing, yes. If you are suspecting two, yes, you can say two. But it is called the provisional. Provisional means I suspect. I suspect. A condition called this i suspect i suspect a condition called this so it is provisional okay what is the best way of telling the patient the provisional diagnosis we have principles in black too like talk to the patient as if he doesn't know anything about anything what do you mean dr mo the patient is not a doctor the patient is not a doctor the patient doesn't have or doesn't know medical jargon Speak to the patient simply and slowly. So in provisional diagnosis, you must be simple in the way you choose your words, okay? You must be simple. So the patient needs to know what's happening in a simple way. So that's in provisional diagnosis. So make sure the patient needs to know what's happening in a simple way. So the best way of telling the provisional diagnosis, there are two ways here. Some doctors say, well, I'm suspecting a condition called the appendicitis. Have you heard about it? No, doctor. Would you like me to tell you about it? Yes, doctor. Then they start talking about appendicitis. However, 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 the other way which is explaining what appendicitis is and say to say to her and then say to her, it is called appendicitis. So either you say, I'm suspecting appendicitis. Do you know anything about it? No, doctor. Would you like me to say? Yes, doctor. Then explain. Or you explain first and then bring the difficult phrase later. So explain first. So my way will be I will bring the positive findings on which I am building my diagnosis and then I will explain the diagnosis and then I will tell him the words. Dr. Mo, it is complicated. Give us example. When I start talking about provisional diagnosis because it's very important for the patient to know why are you thinking of this? Number one. Why are you thinking of heart attack? Number one. Number two, what heart attack is? Number three, say heart attack. So I will give you an example, the best way. So I will say to the patient in the provisional diagnosis. Well, what did I do before provisional? I've examined and I've taken history. Yeah. So I will say to him, well, from the history that you've given me, you've mentioned to me that you have chest pain, central crushing, going to the left shoulder. And they've also mentioned it started half an hour ago. And you also mentioned that, uh, that you can't breathe. Okay? It's affecting your breathing. Am I right? Yes, doctor. And when I examined you, when I examined you, I found that your oxygen saturation is low. So now I have told him the positive in history and the positive in examination on which I'm thinking of in my So that is bringing me to think of a condition that is affecting your heart. It's basically decreasing the blood supply that's going to your heart and it's causing the pain and the shortness of breath, which we call it heart attack. So, three things I have done. 
in the provisional diagnosis. Three things I have done. Number one, I recapped. Recapped what, doctor? Recapped what? I recapped the positive, the positive symptoms and examination. Then I said to him, that's why I'm suspecting what? A condition that's affecting the blood supply of the heart. So I explained, I explained in a simple way, heart attack. And finally, I mentioned the word, which we call it heart attack, which we call it heart attack. So that's how you tell provisional diagnosis. So provisional diagnosis, you will tell it in a way. What is the way? Number one, I will recap the positive. Then I will explain the condition in a simple way, then heart attack. For example, if I'm suspecting appendicitis, so I will say to the patient, from the history that you have given me, you have mentioned to me that you have fever, right? Yes, doctor. And you also mentioned that you have pain that started around the umbilicus and it's then shifted to the side of the abdomen, the right side, the right side of the abdomen. Yes, doctor. And you've mentioned that it started two hours ago, three hours ago, whatever. Yes, doctor. And it's also decreasing your appetite. Am I right? Yes, doctor. So I have recapped the positive history. And when I examined your abdomen, when I also after examining your abdomen, so now I'm thinking of, of what? So now I recapped, then I'm thinking of a condition that actually causing inflammation where? In a small finger-like structure at your tummy, at your bowel. Yes, so I explained now what is appendicitis, which we call it appendicitis. So positive, explaining the condition, then tell him appendicitis, okay? That's on how to give provisional diagnosis in an efficient way, please, that way. After giving a provisional diagnosis, then I will start management. Then I will start management. I will start management. So now I will start management, okay? Picture, we need this to be clear, the board to be clear. So guys, this is how we uh, have the board, okay? Now, I will start management.